Welcome back to the Detect Crime Series webinar presented by Serialize. In the previous episode, we sat down with four scholars from the Detect project to discuss the portrayal of women and certain minorities in TV crime series. Let's return to this roundtable. In today's episode, we'll focus on the portrayal of race and ethnicity in crime series. The representation of race and ethnicity has been historically less a subject of discussion in the European TV industry than it has been in America. That does not mean that race and ethnicity do not play a role in European crime series. Quite on the contrary, the lack of debate may have contributed to the continued circulation of certain stereotype representations in many markets. So how should we think about race and ethnicity on television? And what can screenwriters actually do to bring more diversity in terms of race, ethnicity, gender and sexuality into the world of the TV crime series? France is a country that has become more conscious of its ethnic diversity. Detect scholar Alvaro Luna examines the representation of French people of Algerian or Maghrebi descent for his Detect research. He says that their representation in French crime series has been changing over the years. In the 1980s, after the first wave of children was born in France, we see more characters of Maghrebi descent on television. However, they were primarily represented as petty criminals. The 1990s then experienced a multicultural turn. French TV producers were now keen to show how diverse France was. Uh, is in the 1990s. Um, and here you see uh, the first uh, Franco Magrovi uh, lead investigators um, happening there uh, in, in, the, in the series. What's interesting was that most of them, the, the few that, that were happening, they were, they were detectives that were um, comedians themselves, right? So there was this. Um, a need of having, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a detective of color, but this detective had a, a very specific role. He was a man and he was um, funny, right? So something that we need to, and this, this is one stereotype that continues uh, today. There is this, uh, we can think of a different films in France that are with a detective who happens to be of color, a black or uh, of, of Marguerite descent, who is a comedian. What it's interesting is that um, I've been I've been seeing how uh, throughout the the last thirty years um, how this detective of color has changed. Um, and however, there's some little things that have that, have st that stay that remain the same. Um, we can think about the 1990s. There was um, there was this over uh, representation of criminals um, of, of people of color, men, people of color as criminals. I need, I, I'm talking a lot about men because women usually are not present um, in this um, in this genre in in crime in crime fiction. Um, and women of color are rare. I can think of several examples. There are, um, but but I want to emphasize that it is where uh, the diversity of gender and ethnicity. Alvaro says that in the 2010s and 20s, we see a number of lead detectives of color who are not comedians. One example is Franz Drew's police procedural Chevy. In the show, Kader Sheriff is a police inspector in the city of Lyon. The show starts when his new partner, Adeline Briat, shows up for a first day of work. The series playfully introduces the matter of racial prejudice right in the pilot when she arrests Sheriff after he breaks into what turns out to be his own apartment. She tries to justify her action by saying that anybody would have arrested an Arab breaking into a window, a comment that Sharif ignores with her wry smile. Alvaro has identified a number of patterns in the representation of detectives of color in European crime series such as Sharif in France and Germany's Tatort and Dogs of Berlin. I can think about the oversexualization of bodies of color, meaning that we see uh... For example, I was thinking of Tator, the season, the season with um, with Mehmet Kostoulous. Um, um, he uh, there are several researchers who, who mentioned how his body was over uh, over sexualized. How there were uh, many different shower scenes with the actor, uh, who happens to be good looking, um, right? But there was this um, this over sexualization, which we also see in Sheriff, um, which is another series uh, with the lead detective. Um, I was the over sexualization with him was interesting interesting because I saw it more through the reception articles on the series. So many, uh, many uh, articles were mentioning how charming the actor was, how, uh, how he was a charmer, of ladies charmer, a ladies man. Uh, so it was interesting to, to, see, to see that there was this over sexualization. There is a link to criminality that is present uh, in the series. But here, this is perhaps one change that I want to emphasize is that um, these characters who are detectives now, 
Um, well, they are not criminals themselves, um, most of them. Um, I mean, we, I can think of at least one uh, of, um, uh, of the, the last Panthers. He happened to be a former um, criminal. But I've seen that, for example, the, their father is, was a criminal who was in jail or their brother, or there's always one little link. So it is this little trope that, uh, that happened that was really present in the 1960s. Here is, is still there, but very minimal. Another one that I've seen is integration narratives, meaning that um, you, often their parents are immigrants. This is, this is also a success story, right? So kids who were going on the wrong path, but then they, they got to the police uh, department and they became uh, 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 an integrated person, right? In France, there's this, this uh, integration, this integrationist discourse of um, how can we uh, integrate them into the French ways, right? So we see characters like this, um, and characters of color following that. Something else that I want to uh, want to emphasize too is the presence, for example, of the community culture. So the immigrant migrant culture, for example, it is rarely present, or it is presented in a minimal way. Meaning that, for example, the parents would not uh, wear, for example, the hijab, um, uh, the veil. Um, the mothers, for example, um, they would they would speak. Um, often perfect French, um, which I'm not saying that this is not something that you will see in a Franco Maghrebi uh, family. I don't want to also come up with another stereotype myself, but it's something that at least the audiences have um, commented on that. For example, there was this article in which uh, uh, a viewer said that he did not identify with Sharif. And the last thing that I would say uh, is um, some, of the, some of the aesthetics uh, could be at some point, analyzed as a post-racial, um, as following post-racial aesthetics. By post-racial mean that sometimes um, some, some of the relationships that, something interesting that I can say about all the ones, all the, I, I was looking at Docs of Berlin, Profilage, The Last Panther, Sharif, several seasons of Tartort uh, in Germany. Um, most, if not all, the detectives of color, their partners, their romantic partners are white. So that's, that's something that was very interesting, right? Um, so uh, Catherine Squires mentions that um, uh, interracial relationships on television, they're, they're often used as a post-racial um, aesthetic device, meaning that they want to, cre they want to create a, uh, an image of a society that has come into terms with, uh, not only coming to terms with race relations um, and, and issues, but surpass them. This last point is a little surprising. Does this mean we should not represent interracial couples on TV? Detect scholar Federico Pagello clarifies this point for us. Should, is it better to represent interracial couples or should be, is it be better to represent non-interracial couples? The, the answer is simply it's none of them as single solution. That becomes ideological because you're just denying that there is everything. As you were saying before, mm. absolutely, it should be so interesting to represent the actual communities, including the, the um, isolationists, isolationist or even reactionist conservative culture of many of these communities. At the same time, it is good to represent uh, uh, integration. As you were saying, it's just the, the stereotype comes when you cut out some of the, of the reality, um, and therefore we shouldn't counter. We, we 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 get lost in the trap of ideological prop, of propaganda, of from one side or another. When when we simplify the complexity and the contradictions by showing one identity or one uh, combination of identity as the right one, as the the one the, the only one that should be followed. What is needed is complexity in the representation of the minority community. It's not about showing off the model integrated citizen, but rather showing the many different voices and perspectives that exist in every community. Suppressing any one aspect means you're only falling back into bland stereotyping. Alvaro raises one other concern about another widespread practice in the TV industry. It's also the issue of colorism as well. How um, how how skin tones uh, in 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 characters of color are also tend to be on the lighter uh, part of the of the of the spectrum, and it's something that um, 
that is also prevailing in American television as well. Um, how how the casting of several, um, yeah, how color is also shades of color are also present, and it's something that I, I do. I, I just want to emphasize too is how um, all these questions should be asked. Um, is something that we're not going to get an answer, but it's something that screenwriters should also be conscious about. Is that um, the audiences are looking at are diverse to, to begin with, and if not, they are also aware of of this diversity. So something that I um, that we should never um, so I, when I believe that uh, you know audiences um, you know the mainstream audiences they are very diverse uh, they're also watching uh, television shows from many different areas of the world right, right now with Netflix so Alvaro argues that what is needed is many images of people of color on television the 19th century American abolitionist Frederick Douglass who was born a slave had many photographs taken of himself and circulated so that people could get used to the image of a former slave. Let's see what screenwriters can do to bring more diversity to TV crime series. Our experts have also thought about what the role of screenwriting can be in coming to terms with these tricky questions of diversity. Detect scholar Monica Dalasta says, you don't have to be too explicit in your writing. Give hints and let the audience do the rest. Another way that uh, screenwriters can work to, in order to, uh, to, 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 to shape their characters in a complex way and introduce elements of diversity is to introduce uh, kind of allusions, let's say, um, um, instill in the uh, the thought that uh, there is a kind of uh, romantic attraction between two characters uh, uh, of the same sex, for example, that is um, something that <clears throat> appeal appeals to uh, a certain a certain um, um, types of audiences. Uh, there is a a, a practice that I learned. I didn't know that it existed, that it, that it exists, but there is a, 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 an audience practice that is called shipping. Do you, did you know that, the shipping? So they, they are going to uh, elaborate on little, on small allu allusions um, um, about uh, potential relations uh, between certain characters and uh, and sometimes these are uh, same sex characters and uh, so I think this is also something that uh, can be used in a acute way from uh, by by the by the screenwriters to uh, add complexity to their to their plots. Federico Pagello says that the use of subtext is not just a way of getting around network censorship. It's also a sign of good writing, because leaving things unspoken can give depth to a scene. Nuances and, and uh, subtext and, uh, and simply good writing, because actually, aesthetically speaking, it's not, not an overtly explicit and, uh, mm, how do you say that in English, uh, clear-cut, one-sided agenda is good writing, good writing, good characters, good stories are much more complex and much more about the contradiction of the single individual. So for instance, the, the interracial or choosing between an interracial couple rather than a same uh, race, race couple is less important than how you describe the interaction between two characters. If you have to choose, choose one and then explore the contradiction of each character and see how things are not neither idyllic uh, integration nor, nor simple uh, isolationism as I was calling it before, but uh, something much more complex within the single subject and in their relationship. Alvaro Luna suggests that TV storytelling allows characters to evolve and reveal themselves gradually characters can become more complex over time. Some characters can also evolve. And I, and I think um, this, uh, of course, we're not gonna push an agenda perhaps in the first, uh, on your pitch, 
right? And it's something that I saw well in Sharif. The first, uh, Sharif in the first season, um, we have him, but we, it doesn't, we don't know much about his, his family life. We don't, we don't know much a lot of, uh, about him. As, a, as the series evolves, we, we get to know more about it, right? As the, as the, uh, as the audiences fall in love with the character, right? Um, it's something that we could also be uh, open about too. You're completely right. We, the, the audiences, we need to, um, those are the clients as well. If we, if we see it from, from, a, from a market uh, perspective, right? Those are the people who could make this uh, uh, evolve or not. But I feel that um, definitely be, beware of following uh, an, a, a very specific civil rights agenda. It's, it's, it's something that could potentially um, damage the, a character that could, it's a person, right? It is, it is something living um, that we could eventually, uh, that, the, that the screenwriter can um, eventually change and, and, and include more. of. Finally, we should talk about the market. Of course, there are economic considerations to be made. Television production is a resource-intensive enterprise. You need a lot of money to shoot a TV series. And there must be an audience willing to watch this. Yet by singling out the white middle-class male and the occasional female as the center of the narrative, we are making certain assumptions about what the audience prefers to watch. We are assuming that the audience only wants to watch people who look like them. The fallacy of that argument is twofold. First, are all TV audiences automatically white, middle-class male and the occasional female? As Alvaro said, French society, for instance, is much more diverse than what it typically appears on screen. So we must assume that French TV audiences and those watching French TV shows in other countries are much more diverse as well. One step in that direction, obviously, is the female detective and the detective of color. But there's a second aspect to this. Do we really only want to watch people who are just like us? The point of narrative, in my view, is not to address the identity of the viewer, but to problematize the identity of the viewer. It's not to say, to, to give them the reflection of their identity, which I found really, really problematic. It's really risky. If the viewer is watching something just to have his identity confirmity, confirmed, <laughs> then why are you watching anything? If it doesn't matter what is your identity, the, the narrative, the power of narrative is that of making you experience different identities. And intersectionality means to show the viewer that they don't have one single simple identity. And by watching and reading narratives, they experience uh, other people's identity and they are reflected not in their pre-existing identity, but they are helped to make emerge identities they had before and they didn't know, or they can acquire new identities by, by thanks to the power of narrative to make you experience something that you will never maybe do, that you will never can experience directly. So how can we, how can I, white, middle class, uh, European, male, heterosexual person, to know really what is someone else's identity? Narrative is one of the most powerful way to, to get out from my identity if I have one, I mean, I have one, but it's not fixed and it's not there and to be prolonged forever. In screenwriting, we talk about the duality of identification and fascination. There are certain elements in a character that we can identify with. The character deals with an emotional issue that we are familiar with. And then there are elements about the character that are decidedly not like us, that give us something extra, that fascinate and introduce us to a new experience. As Federico says, the power of narrative is to try on new identities and experiences. So let's give our viewers new identities and experiences. Thank you for watching. Now go and create great shows. In addition to this webinar, we're also organizing a contest for new original series ideas for either broadcast or streaming services. The proposed show should challenge and push the genre in un unexpected ways and use crime narratives to explore the richness and complexity 
of European societies. An international jury of top professionals from the broadcast and streaming industries will review the top five submissions. The winning author or team of authors will be invited to attend the DETECT final conference in Rome in June 2021 and meet the members of the jury. You can go to the link in the show notes of this episode to find out more about this contest. Music